Okay, I just received a mainspring from CousinsUK.com and I'm repairing this very old watch. Let me just take this mainspring out here and toss this other stuff aside. I'm making this video today just to show you what I do when I wait for a couple of weeks to get the mainspring. So this came in a container that looks pretty locked up. There we go. There's the container. It's actually in nice condition. There's the mainspring. So the original mainspring on this pocket watch, this is for a friend of mine. Um, this is the original mainspring for the pocket watch. Uh, it's It's got a really interesting end to it. A little hook on the end here. So I'm probably going to have to, let me just put that up here and see if it can zoom in at all. I think this camera needs fixing. You can see that hook there in my old fingers. Geez, my fingers look old under camera. Wow! Anyway, that hook, I believe I need to make a hook like that with the main string I a spring I just purchased in order to hook it into the inside of the barrel because the barrel has a notch in it that you use. Let's see if I can take the barrel out. I'm gonna lower my seat here a bit. And I also have to change my glasses so this works better. There's the barrel. So if you look carefully at this, I'm going to switch glasses for a second. Apologize. Uh, a pair of tweezers out here so I can deal with this. There we go. So there's the barrel. And and you can see that there's, there's a small hole there and that's where the, um, the mainspring fits right in that little hole where the hook is. Um, again, I apologize if this camera doesn't focus well, but I'll just go anyway. I'll just keep going. Anyway, that's where the, the, the barrel, that's where this hook hooks into the barrel. So I'm going to unwind that main, the mainspring I just received and see if it in fact has a hook. So now you can, some people take a mainspring and they pluck it right into the watch, right? Basically they, 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 um, they take the mainspring and they just put it into the barrel and, and, uh, and then they put this on top and push it all in and it all works, right? Well, I want to make sure that mainspring is the right mainspring, first of all, before I try to fart with it too much and uh, screw the whole thing up. It's interesting, this thing's in aluminum foil. It's like I'm receiving uh, drugs from uh, the cartel. And uh, yeah, it's like Breaking Bad. Watchmaker needs more money, so he decides to cook drugs for the cartel instead of making watches. I don't think anybody would, anybody would uh, watch that movie. <laughs> it's kind of a stupid stupid theme for the movie. Okay, there it is there. I'm looking at the edge here on this side here and I don't believe that's gonna work. Um, but in general I, I measured the right size and strength of the mainspring. So the width should be the right width and and the, um, the strength should be the right strength which is, ends up being the thickness of that mainspring. And the length should be around the same length and I can see on the inside the arbor thing is cut right so that's good so I'm just gonna take this mainspring outside of the uh, coil very carefully and I'll do like I do in a barrel where I just grab it and then release it slowly like so just grab it and keep hanging on to it and then walk it walk it out slowly and you should wear protective glasses or something while you're doing this so it doesn't damage your eyes and because it, it can snap up and hit you in the eye so you got to watch it so there we go so there's the mainspring uncoiled and if I look at the the end part so all I have on the end part is a hole so I couldn't get the mainspring with an end part that looked like like this it also looks pretty wide should be the right width though because I measured it correctly. Yeah, it's the right width. It just looks wider. 
So that's just put that against the other mainspring and make sure the width is right, and it is. So I have to develop some kind of a hook that hooks into the barrel. And looking at the barrel here and what I have here, <coughs> I do have some options, I believe. I can try to fold the mainspring over and then and then fashion something on the end of this here to hook that in. Um, I'm not sure. Another way of doing it is I can is I can punch out. I can punch the barrel out to leave a little hook on the barrel itself, and then use that as the hook, and just forget this hole altogether. And that might be what I do because I don't think I've got any other way of doing this. Even if I fold this this uh, mainspring over once, and I heat it up and fold it over once to make to make a hook. I'd have to trim it first, I believe. So I'd have to cut it here, trim it down to an to an edge. Um, then I'd have to uh, figure out how to how to make the uh, hook that it wouldn't stick out of the barrel. So I don't know if that's possible. So I think my best option here is to uh, figure out a way of either punching the mainspring barrel to make a hook. To hook into this end here, or another option is of, is I take a uh, screw, like a watchmaker screw, and I screw that into the barrel, um, a very small screw, screw it into the barrel, and then file the end of the screw down after I've done that, and maybe solder it so that the hole is there. So I'm going to go away and think about this. It's going to be some pretty deep thinking going on. Hey, right, part two. So. I think I can actually use the hook on the end of the old mainspring, set that inside of the groove, the opening of the new mainspring, and I believe there's enough room once that hook is there to catch the edge of that barrel. So I'm going to try that first. And so this won't even be attached, it'll sort of be sitting there. So in order to do that, I just have to snap this hook off and leave a little bit of spring remaining but I gotta make sure when I snap the hook off that I uh, it doesn't go flying somewhere so what I'll do is I'll take the hook and I'll snap it off inside this bag like this and that way it's lined up properly like that I gotta apply a lot of pressure I think to snap that hook off let me just line this up again here so I don't screw it up. And again, when you do these videos and you try to do them with, uh, you're basically trying to do the video the same time you're, same time you're working. It's not easy. It's not easy, folks. So I'm just applying a bit of pressure there to see if that works. I'm not sure if that worked at all. Maybe I just need to... Oh, there we go. So it's off. I'll just drop that down. And now, look, look at that little hook here. And that would go inside the barrel. Like this. Or inside the mainspring here, like that. And it leaves just enough hook there to, to hook the inside of the barrel. So what I'm going to try to do is just reel it into the barrel carefully. So I hate videotaping while I'm doing this, but I might move the camera around here so you can see it a little bit better. So just move the camera here and try to put this in the barrel without killing myself. The other problem I have here is I think that hook is higher, so it might snag that opening higher, which could cause a whole other issue. Don't know. Not sure. I'm gonna try though. Too fat to fly. Yeah, that opening is a lot higher, so maybe the original. The hook looks like in this. It's in the center though, so I am confused. 
I am confused. So if that goes in like that, and I have this, you watch me fumble around here while I try to get that in. This is not going to be an easy thing to do. Because i got to bend that mainspring the same time I've got to put the hook in there. Which is a challenge. I almost lost the whole thing there. Anyway, to, I'm going to turn this off for a second while I fire it around with it so you don't have to watch me try to do this, but I'm going to do it by hand. So I think I have this thing hooked in here, but I'm, and I'm winding the spring in by hand, which is, uh, I'm not sure if it's recommended or not, because I don't have the gloves on and that kind of stuff. So the, so this is an old pocket watch, I'm not too concerned with it, but normally I wouldn't do this. So, and you know what, I think this is backwards. Because after I wind this in, it should be like that, not the other way. Shit, gotta turn it around the other way. There, I'll <clears throat> videotape the last few seconds of me winding it in the other way. And then I'll try to show you what I did with the hook. And hopefully this works, because I don't know. I kind of transplanted the hook from the other watch, or the other spring, to this spring. And I'm not sure if that transplant will work or not. The thing I'm worried about the most, there's a spring in there now. The thing I am worried about the most here is, there we go, and there's, there's where the hook is, right there, and it is hooked to the barrel, and if you look on this side here, you'll see that the, there is a better angle, you'll see I got it snugged again, so it's the spring itself holding that hook against the barrel. So I know that if I, if somebody were to fully wind this barrel um, and get to the very end of it, it might, that hook might let go. I'm not sure. I'm going to try it though, because it seems like a good idea. Because if you look at that hook in there, see if I can show you that. I think that's good enough. If you look at that hook in there, it's, it is hooked in there nicely and it's holding the barrel. So, so that's, uh, <clears throat> that's kind of replacing that and then this here part I'll oil this first but this here part goes over here and I gotta snug that in and I got myself a barrel and I just have to reassemble the watch so and what I'll do I know the watchmakers out there are gonna be very mad at me but what I'll do is I'll just add a bit of oil to the barrel right now some people say you don't need to do this and some people say you do and I'm not sure but I always do it anyway so I just put a little bit of oil on the edges here, like this, and that just seeps into the uh, the grooves, like so. And I usually do four, like that, and then the last one like this. There we go, and. As that barrel turns, or the uh, mainspring turns over time, this oil will get into that barrel. So I do that. And again, I should have the finger cots on, but this is a, this is for a friend of mine who, um, I don't charge him for this or whatever, but um, he's a good guy and uh, he's going to give this to his son. And, you know, if this doesn't work properly, I'll just... Uh, do it again but marrying this up here is tricky because this is loop is usually smaller than the ring here so I may have to expand this ring a bit here because this loop and the ring are not the right size so I may have to expand this a bit when I do it so I think the, I'm not sure if the lighting is any good here so I'll turn this camera around a bit for a little bit better lighting is that any better? I don't know shouldn't be asking you right because you can't respond back to me Anyway, so what I typically do is try to get an edge in like this and then find out where the hook is on the barrel there and try to align the hook up to the opening. But when you turn it around, I know I've got to turn it this way, it should hook in anyway, right? So if I'm able to push this in to expand this, um, which sometimes works, 
um, then great. You don't want to push too hard because if you push too hard you could crack the spring or do something with the spring. So I gotta put my little glasses down a bit so I can have a really close look at this while I'm doing this. So this is tricky as poop. Very, very tricky. I wish they wouldn't have designed these barrels like this. They're a pain in the butt. A pain in the Batinsky. So I'm just trying to open this up a bit so I can slide it in. There we go. Now I turn it like this until I feel that it's hooked. I ain't hooked yet. Oh, there we go. There's hook now. So that's the technique. I just let that go and it goes back. So hopefully that'll hold. So, so there's the uh, notch. Again, I apologize for my fingernails. I do play guitar. I got a little bit of a Steve Ray Vaughan thing happening at the end of the month, plus a plus some Lenny Kravitz. Anyway, there's the hook sitting in there like that, nicely. I oiled it. Um, that should hold. Um, and there's the barrel all together. And I did sort of turn it, turn the uh, turn it counterclockwise to make sure it's it's still ho it's hooked. And I just turn it and then loosen like that. And it moves on its own. So now I know the barrel is intact with the new spring in it. And it looks like it's the right size and everything. So just going to reassemble this watch and see if it actually ticks. So it might be back. Okay, I put the, the arbor back into the barrel. It was just sitting there and I stuck it in. And now I just have to put the barrel in place like so there we go now the really tricky part here I kept the the uh, escapement and everything together so I uh, wouldn't have to redo that whole thing but the tricky part here is going to be putting the main plate back on because it requires some jiggling and juggling in order to get it to fit so I'm gonna not show you how I do that because it's uh, top secret and I wouldn't want you to see me farting around with it. So, so I think I'll just put it together and once I get it together I'll let you know. Oh, well, by the way, when I put a movement together I usually put the plate down first and I take the screws and I put them in in place but I tighten them really loosely and that way I know the plate's going to stay where it's supposed to be, but I don't want to squish the gears, so I just do this, and I don't tighten. When I say I tighten them, I just put them in place. I don't really tighten them. So I take this and I drop that down. That way the the plate is kind of where it's supposed to be. And then I can nudge the uh, the upper pivots a bit to make sure that the uh, plate falls into place and then once I nudge it the right amount and I think the pivots are in place I examine each one of those pivot holes carefully to make sure that uh, I'm not wrong and I don't have a, uh, a major issue with the pivots because if I if I do and I'm going to break one of the pivots off that is not good so I usually do that and I'll and, and I've got so you can see space here it's like plenty of space space here and just enough plates the, the plate floating just enough I'm gonna loosen this one up a little bit here floating just enough to be able to uh, I'm having fun uh, just be to be able to lift it and move it and that kind of stuff and usually when it clunks into place, it clunks into place. You can kind of feel it. So I'm going to just fart around with it. With I use this. I got this in a hobby a hobby store, and I just use that to nudge the uh, the wheels around until the the pivots on the top of each wheel fall into place. I know my mainspring is in place, and my keyless mechanism is all in place. 
And once I get that in and screwed down, I'm going to put on the ratchet, the uh, wheels on top here, and then wind it up and see if the thing will work for me. So I'll be back. All right, so I got the watch together again by nudging everything, nudge, 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 and then test it. I just push the main wheel here, the center wheel here, just a bit to see if the thing actually spins. I wait till it comes back, and then I go like that, and there we go, it's working. And then so I know the actual the thing works, and all I need to do then is. Put back the ratchet wheel here, line that up properly. Hopefully that fits in there. There we go. And put the screw in place. I think I can hear my wife in the other room doing all kinds of stuff. Like your bam bam smash boom. So there we go, that's in place. Oh, now she's opening the door to my office, so I better turn off my recording because you can hear her otherwise. So that's that. And then I'm going to put this on here, like so, and get the click spring out of the way. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Probably use a smaller, bigger screwdriver for this normally. There we go. It's in there. I just want to wind this up and see if the new mainspring was going to catch and work, or am I going to have to take it all apart again and start over, which I hate doing. But you got to get it right, so sometimes you just have to start over. I'm not sure, can't remember which way the screws turn. Okay. We turn that way and we just tighten this one up a bit. Like that. And I'll get a a key, a bench key. I'll just put a little bit of a wind on the wheel here to see if that works. Nothing seems to be winding. Not sure what's wrong. I'll just turn that around for a second and see if everything is in place. All right. All I was doing was turning the hands. Re, not so smart. So push in, wind it, and. And I think I just lost contact with the winding, which is a better thing than this wasn't set in properly. I just need to screw this down some more or adjust it or do something. That's weird. That is the keyless mechanism, my friends, but the good news is the watch is ticking. It's not ticking super strong but it's still ticking and if the watch is ticking then the then I'm a clicking I'm not sure if that's Steve Ray Vaughan or what what I don't want to do is strip anything here so I have to make sure that this is actually turning the ratchet on the top it looks like there's an it looks like there's an issue here so I'm going to have to address that issue. I'll be back. Alright, I found the issue. Um, it was me and a whole lot of stupidity. So what happened was I uh, actually didn't screw the plate screw in. And I was so happy and enamored by the fact that this uh, movement is working that I forgot to turn the plate screw in. So I'm winding it up now. And I'm not going to wind it past a certain point. There we go. And there it is working. So it actually looks like it's got a pretty decent amplitude too. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it looks pretty good.
Is that going to focus? There we go. So there it is. So I just put a new mainspring on it, gave it a ton of power. I still have to put some oil on all the pivots and stuff, but look at her go. So that was a completely repaired American Waltham pocket watch. It's not of great uh, value, the, uh, the movement, but it's working like a charm. So that spring is holding, which is kind of neat, and a little fix. And you, you really uh, always have to think way out of the side of the box when you're trying to fix a pocket watch, especially something vintage, because there's something wrong here. You just It's one of many different mechanisms that could be wrong. It could be a broken tooth. It could be anything. So you got to make sure that you check everything. Um, I did a lot of work on the balance on this one here because the balance was not working properly. It was rubbing, so I had a lot of problems there and then uh, once I got the balance moving what I did when the mainspring wasn't working is I just applied some pressure with a toothpick on on the center wheel just a bit of pressure counterclockwise and the center wheel will cause all of these wheels to turn and then the escapement to work and the pallet fork and all that kind of stuff so I did all that got it working perfectly and then and then I said okay now I got to get some power so I had to order a new mainspring and I got the new mainspring and I adapted the little notch on the old mainspring by clipping it off and putting it on the new one. And that solved that problem. And so now all I gotta do is is reassemble the uh, the movement and then uh, time it and make sure it's working properly. So I'll come back when it's completely finished. Okay, there it is in the case now. And it's uh, ticking nicely. I still have to regulate it and take perhaps take a few dents out of the case, but it's got some character. And I put the hands back on, spun them around, and they're working well. Second hand's working well. Second hand was a little loose, I think, when I pushed it in, so I may have to uh, tighten that up a bit. But for now, it's pretty good and hasn't decided to jump out or not, or jump out. So it's working kind of well, kind of good. So I'm going to regulate it now. And that'll be it. I still have to find, though, a bale here for the top. I have to find a loop, bale, whatever. And uh, I'm not sure. I don't want to take a really nice one out of my other, some of my other pocket watches here and borrow it. But uh, anyway, I'll see what I can find online maybe to, uh, to fit that. And then, uh, and then it's done. So I decided to make a bow. I took a coat hanger and chopped a piece of wire, then I put it in my lathe, and then I cut the uh, end just uh, enough to fit inside the uh, pocket watch. And I did a lot of bending, and I did some more, I fit it, I said, okay, how can I make this circular? Kept bending it, kept working it, I gotta hammer it like an old blacksmith, and then finally got it done, and there you go. The bow made it of coat hanger wire. <laughs>